was prepared for a show. Like I was, I don't usually get this fancy on the it's show. Pretty rocking. Thank you. I know I, I like it. it. I feel like I you like would wear, it. especially this belt. Yes, I like the belt. How are you doing? I'm really excited to be here. I'm very nervous that you're here. You are. <laughs> So seasoned, no, literally, though. like you and like Meryl are my. That's my. Oh hey. god. Yeah. So they're like my favorite. So look at these outfits. I know we're very 80s. So great. <laughs> okay, so congrats on the lifetime achievement Thank award. You. That was Thank that was this you. month. That's yes. amazing. Yes. Grammy. That's so cool. Is getting that kind of stuff? Does it is it weird for you? Do you get up there and like? I mean, I can't even imagine being you getting up there, winning that kind of award, and thinking of all the amazing things that you've been a part of, that you've done, that you've yeah, helped people. Yeah, it's pretty people. amazing. And, and because we're going out on tour, and I'm not I'm not yeah. hanging up my spurs yet. I know, it's really I love nice that. To get it now. We're very excited. With Mavis Staples. I know. I know. I know. My she, hero. She, we literally were texting about it last night, and I was like, "What?" I was going to ask you, who are some of like your like heroes musically? Well, Mavis, absolutely. The staple singers from the time when they were backing yeah. up Dr. Martin Luther King. Yeah. And um, you know, speaking of 80s, how about what well, classic of all time, Aretha Franklin? Oh my God, I love her. Ray Charles. Yeah. yeah. But Whitney for an 80s man. Yeah. Whitney and you know, I mean, there's just so many. And for roots artists like me and yeah. Delbert McClinton and Little Feet yeah. and people like that, it was a rough decade on that because they weren't playing our kind of music on the radio till the end of the decade. And it was just by the time Nick of Time won. People went, wow, that's just all kinds of music mixed into one. So, that, and that's why you're one of my favorites. Like I, Thank and that's you. Uh, Linda Ronstadt's one of my favorite. I just love any artist that's like doesn't pigeonhole themselves because that's my favorite thing about music is I love country music, yeah. but I love pop. I love so I grew up on Nirvana. I grew up on everything. I know, I love it so, too. That's one of the reasons I love you because you're really um, eclectic. Thank that's I get it from you. Um, but I, I love that. Not We're, but I love Annie Lennox. Oh my God, me too, me too. I'm just talking with Bonnie Ray. Don't worry about it, America. We're back with Bonnie Ray in the celebration of the 1980s because it's my birthday week. Um, so you, I heard that you briefly worked with Prince in the 80s. Is that correct? I did. I oh. did. Prince called me up and said, Hey, you know, you weren't treated right. Come on over to Paisley Park. Let's make a record together. I love that. And. Um, I said, if we can meet in the middle, you know, I don't necessarily want to do a whole Prince thing and you don't want to do a Bonnie Raitt thing. So yeah. I had a ski accident and fell on my thumb and had to be in a cast for two months. So I had to postpone working with him. This is why I don't and, work out. And then I was like, <laughs> I was like 35, 40 pounds heavier. And I went, you know, if I do a video with this guy, if, we, if the song works and it's yeah. really sexy, I got to do something. I said, I got I to gotta work on this. So I used the cast as an excuse to lose weight and I just... I said, you know, I better quit drinking too because it gets, you know, in your 30s, you put yeah. on pounds a lot easier. I have noticed. So, <laughs> so I ended up hanging out with some friends of mine that were sober, and I went, you know what, this feels really good. So oh. I lost 20 pounds before I worked with Prince. I love that that's what did it. And that's kind of what did it because I was so terrified of being in a video with him and not, not like uh, looking and saying all that sexy stuff to me and going, I don't think this, people are going to believe that. I have to ask this because I didn't know that you had like a bagpipe phase. Oh my God. I'm, Which our is, family is awesome. Scot Our family is Scottish roots. Okay, but a and lot I of people always, have Scottish roots that yes. don't play the bagpipe. <laughs> I, but I really love the sound of bagpipes. It's and, beautiful. And I, I, I got it on a, you know, consignment, you know, yeah. thrifts or whatever you call that. The yeah. sheet when you get used stuff, you know, the newspaper. Yeah. And I, you know, remember those? <laughs> And it I was do. for sale, and I bought them. Yeah. And I and I asked I, in my college paper, I advertised in the want ads for anybody that knew how to blow. Yeah. And, that was <laughs> and then so, it said like this: what? bagpipes underneath. Okay. I, that was my ad. Oh my god! I was like, what kind of results happened after? And then that? I got. I said, you know how to blow bagpipes. Fresh, <laughs> freshman wants to learn, but my freshman wants to learn. And my and my. Um, my housemates at my dorm, they wouldn't let me learn because it just sounds oh. like someone's being strangled. What's so loud? Yeah, oh, it's terrible. Yeah. Really bad. But it is beautiful. And I was like passing out from, I didn't have the air to blow through to that sustain, thing. To sustain, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it seems hard. You I hold like it, it all too hard. I know, it was yeah. too hard for me. I'm glad I stuck with the guitar. I, you know, I think we all are. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. I think that was a solid decision. So wait, this is, is this 21? This album, is it number 21? Yes, number 21. That's amazing. So what, out of, what do you feel like makes this one different? 
Well, I wanted to write, I was really inspired by it, especially because we lost John Prine this last year to yeah. COVID. And I, I yes. love his yeah. story songs like Angel from Montgomery mm. and Donald and Lydia and, you know, Jackson Brown's early records. I love that finger, simplicity of a finger picking song telling a story. So mm -hmm. I, this, this record has a couple of mine on there that are a, a third person kind yeah. of story of uh, taking, the, taking on the character of somebody else besides me. Yeah. Because I really, Which frankly, is fun, have you can mind go into all my places. personal life already, and I yeah. sleep that open. In the first 20? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So that's yeah. different for me. I went back I to that. my roots, kind of just played folk guitar and sang these story songs. And then I wrote a rocker that's uh, to my guitar player's uh, track that was just too good to give up. I had to play, you know, dual guitar with him. I and that. I wrote a song for what, all the people we lost, yeah. even for the ones who didn't make it. Yeah. So wait, what's the story behind the title track, Just Like That? Just Like That, I was watching the evening news and sometimes they have a human interest story at yeah. the end. And they said, oh, we're gonna follow this woman to the house of the man who received her son's donated heart. Oh, wow. And they followed her into the house and he said, just sit down. He said, would you like to put your head on my chest and listen to your son's heart? And I, I just, I lost it. I just lost it and oh I was so, God moved by the story that I ended up writing a character and writing a song about what it would be like for both those people yeah. to experience that. Oh my God, what a line. Yeah, oh my God. That's, that's so, so incredibly sad, but beautiful at the same that's time. That's how I feel about it. I mean, we, yeah. need, we need stories that really open your heart in these difficult times. You know? Yeah. Um, I can't let you leave this room without talk. I know I've mentioned it to you before, but your I can't express to you what happened inside of me when I heard, I love Love Me Like a Man on the regular version, but the live version specifically, I, it, like, you know, like on your thing, it'll be like what your favorites are, what you've listened to most, and you're like, that is literally my favorite. Oh, it's I, that one, and oh, I Never Loved a Man by Aretha Franklin. Those are my two I listen I to the most. I love that. That's my favorite song of hers, too. That's my favorite my song absolute, of hers. If I could only have one song, that would be the one. That's my favorite oh of Aretha. Oh, my God. That's why Those I love it. Well, two. I know. That's why we relay. We're like I'm sisters. I'm telling you, but I, I, I love that live version. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, it is literally just so amazing and so soulful and so raw. It's just so good. Thank you. And, and honestly, too, I'm going to say it, this is no shade to anyone, but it's also you're from a time, too, like people had to be able to be amazing live. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you, it wasn't a time when you could digitally fix everything. It wasn't a, and, and that carries over. And it's just such a lesson. Like, I was just talking to my stylist, like, you performed, I don't care what show it was. We were watching, and you got on stage, and it was like, well, and that's how you were supposed to do it, everyone. Oh, <laughs> like it was like, it literally is. It's like, you're, you just, you sound amazing live. And that's Thank not you. true for everyone, not throwing shade at anyone, just saying that's what it is. And Well, I didn't sell a lot of records the first 20 years. And then even with Nick of Time, it was like a little blip of a couple of albums that did well. But I knew if I just did every show really good that people would keep coming to see me. You know what, that's so true. Everybody's always worried about winning awards. And my thing is like, I don't really care about winning the award. I just want the performance slot because yeah. I just want to prove exactly. what I can do. That's I'm totally it. with you. Because yeah. I mean, give me a live show and I'll, I'll prove what yeah. I can. Yeah, that's what, yeah, there's something that happens in us. I love so that. So thank you for appreciating yeah. that live version. It's, I, it's amazing. Thank you. And that just doesn't exist, I don't feel, anymore with artists. So, but wait, are you looking forward to getting back out there? Because I know a lot oh. of artists are, because everybody's been on hold for two like two years. Two and a half years yeah. since we had a lot. Last week was yeah. the first warm up show. Shows. First audience I heard in two and a half years. It doesn't feel good. Oh my God, I yeah. was like. You feed off of it. I yeah. mean, it was the first time I'd sung Angel from Montgomery since John passed. And oh, wow. I Can't Make You Love Me was like transcendent. And I got yeah. a couple of new guys in the band. And I hadn't seen my guys until we got in the studio last June to make wow. my album. That was a long, after 50 years on the road, to have that much time without playing in front of people. Because I also think people don't realize, like, your band is like your second family. You see them sometimes more than your actual family. Yeah. So, so that's a really big hole of yeah. isolation, yeah. like, especially for a creative person. Well, it's a good thing we have texting and sending FaceTime. dog pictures what? and everything. Yeah. Like anyway, Bonnie is performing later in the show, so stick around. The new album is called Just Like That, and it's out tomorrow. You can also go online to find tickets for her tour, which is happening right now. You gotta go check her out, because not many artists sound like this live, people.